Moving on with differentiation of exponential and logarithmic functions, we just learned the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. We did some examples with it, and now we want to find the equation of a tangent line. So we know to find the equation of a line, we utilize either the formula of y equals mx plus b, or y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So they give us the x value for both of these equations, but we need to come up with a y value, and we need to come up with a slope value. Let's do the easy part first. Let's come up with our y value. To come up with the y value, all we need to do is evaluate our function at the x value. So this is 1 minus natural log times the square root of 1. So 1 minus the natural log of 1, because square root of 1 is itself, which is 1 minus 0, because the natural log of 1 is 0, which is 1. So that gives me my y value. That's what I'm going to substitute in for those yellow places. Okay, now I need to figure out what my slope is. Well, my slope is given by the derivative of the function. So we just need to take the derivative of this. Before I do that, let me convert my square root as x to the 1 half power. Okay? So I have the derivative of x is just 1 minus, now I have a chain rule. So what's the derivative of natural log? That is 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside, and so that is 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. So this is the derivative of the natural log part, and this is the derivative of the inside of the natural log part. That's my chain rule. So now what I need to do is I need to simplify this. So this is 1 minus 1 over x to the 1 half. I also have a 2 in the denominator. And then I can also move this negative down to the denominator. So I have all of those parts in the denominator. So that's 1 minus 1 over 2. If I multiply x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half, I add my power. 1 half plus 1 half is just 1. So my derivative at any given value is 1 minus 1 over 2x. Well, if I want my slope, I need to evaluate this when my x value is 1. So this is 1 minus 1 over 2 times 1, or 1 minus 1 half, or 1 half. And so that gives me my slope value. Now it's just simple algebra to figure out the equation of this line. So I'm going to use my y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 formula. Plugging in my appropriate values, my y value is 1, my slope value is 1 half, and my given x value is 1. So if I distribute my 1 half, 1 half x minus 1 half, so if I solve for y by moving my 1 over, that gives me y equals 1 half x plus 1 half. If you don't trust yourself, you can always double check this by graphing it. So I have the graph of y equals x minus natural log of square root of x here. That was my given equation. And I want to confirm that the graph of 1 half x plus 1 half gives me the equation of the tangent line at x equals 1. So we're looking specifically at x equals 1, which is right here. And so we want to confirm, do they intersect at that point, and do they look to have the same slope at that point? And so I can zoom in a little bit. I'm scrolling my mouse out by zooming in. Or you could also zoom in by this plus button over here. But we want to confirm that they intersect at x equal 1, and it looks like they do, and it looks like they have the same slope at x equal 1. So I believe that we have the right equation here. We have the right solution. All right, what else do we want to do? 
We want to be able to take the derivative of exponential and logarithmic equations that aren't with the natural exponential function or the natural logarithmic function. And so, what's the derivative of any base to an exponent? Well, it is defined here. It's the natural log of that base times that base to the exponent. And what's the derivative of any log of any base? And that is 1 over all of x times the natural log of b. Now, notice the derivative of my log function is only defined where our values are greater than 0. And that's because the log is only defined of where our values are greater than 0. I could prove these to you here, but I think we have more important things to do. Let's like actual examples. And so let's do some examples of these here. Okay, my first example is an exponential function where my exponent is not e. So I'm going to use this formula that we see right here. Um, the derivative of any base to the exponent is the natural log of base times that base to the exponent. So let me copy this over here. So we have it ready to utilize. Okay, so a couple of things. Well, here I've already said that my base is 5. But notice I also have a chain rule. In my exponent, I don't just have an x. I have a whole function varied with x. So I'm going to have to do a chain rule here. All right, so my derivative of f prime of x is equal to first my natural log of my base, which is natural log of 5, times 5 to my exponent. Okay, so that was the derivative of the outside. And now the chain rule says I need to take the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of my inside is just 2. And so this gives me 2 times the natural log of 5 times 5 to the 2x minus 3. So even though there was a chain rule involved, it was just one teeny tiny extra step, and we just followed the rule of the derivative of a exponential function. Okay, working with the second one, I see that I have a log term here. And so let's go back and let's review what the derivative of log was. Okay. But before I actually take the derivative of log, notice I have an inside and I have an outside piece. So I've got to do a chain rule with that power, and then eventually when I take the derivative of the inside, that's when I will take the derivative of the logarithm. So I have g prime of x is equal to 4 times x squared plus log base 7 of x all to the third power. So that was the derivative of the outside piece using my chain rule. And now I need to take the derivative of my inside piece, so times the derivative of this here. Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x. We're pretty familiar with that. Plus, now I need to do this here. So this is 1 over x times the natural log of my base, where my base is 7. I actually don't see that there's any way that we can even simplify this. And so this here is my final answer. And so again, it's just a combination of combining what we've just learned with the derivatives of all of the other rules that we know up until this point.